Hey guys, it's Brett. Thanks for dropping by my channel. So uh, I had originally intended to do a July TBR, but since it's now the middle of July <laughs> and have never gotten to it, I'm going to do a, I think I'm going to do a combo that's going to be what I still want to try to read and stuff that I had on my TBR, which I've already read. So this is kind of going to be a combo half review, wrap up, half things I want to read. And when I get to the end of the month and we'll do a wrap up, I will just um, skip over the things that I've already discussed. Does that make sense? I hope it makes sense. Um, also, I hope you're all staying cool wherever you are. Um, please be safe. I know it's terribly hot everywhere. Uh, but so uh, stay inside, drink lots of water and keep yourself hydrated. So um, all that said, um, all right, let's go. So the first thing I thought I would talk about are the what I'm currently reading now. Um, the first is Congratulations, The Best Is Over by R. Eric Thomas. Uh, Eric Thomas is an essayist, a humorist essayist. Um, his first book, Here For It, I really enjoyed. And this one I'm, I'm liking even more, uh, which in a large part of it is, is about he and his husband, who is a minister, their... Uh, taking on a move and moving to a new city, um, what that means, what that means in terms of establishing yourself in a new place, uh, finding his place, so to speak. But it's really, it's re I'm about halfway through, really charming. Uh, he is also going to be on the um, Gaze Reading podcast coming up. So uh, you'll have to look for that as well. But that's the first. The second is uh, God Killer by Hannah Kainer. First of all, let's just discuss how beautiful this cover is. This is not quite out in the States yet. It's very soon. Um, I know that it's out in Europe, which is where I first saw it. And this is actually the Illumicrate edition. Um, it's a fantasy book. I guess it's I guess it would be classified as YA, but it doesn't necessarily feel like YA, but it's about a um, a young girl who at the start of it, the prologue of this, her um, family is killed by a god or a series of gods. And so when she becomes an adult, she is a god killer um, and is hired to kill got um, when she comes across one who cannot be killed uh, so I don't know enough about it yet I'm only like I started it last night I'm about 40 pages in it kind of hooks you right in the beginning uh, in a way I, I think I'm looking for another version of fourth wing just something like that and I don't know that it's going to be that but uh, it is really interesting so I'll let you know the next uh, run of books here are all things that I've already read this month. First is The Look Back Window by Kyle Dillon Hertz. This will be coming out um, August 1st, I believe. Uh, I thought this was fantastic. He is Kyle Dillon Hertz. It's a first time novelist. This is about a young man who had been uh, repeatedly sexually assaulted as a young boy. Um, and so as an adult has finally made the very brave decision to go after the perpetrator who put him in this position. Um, the look back window refers to there was a law that came out a few years ago um, called the Child's Victim Act, which extends the amount of time that victims have to uh, go after their uh, perpetrators and what happens. Um, I thought it was so well written. He's an incredible writer, you know. It's a tough read. My my friend Jason, who I do gays reading with, said it's kind of a little life liked, and I and I agree with that part of it because it's just not the the length of of a little life, and I would agree with that. I mean, there's a there's a lot more bleakness in a little life that I didn't necessarily feel here, and I and I certainly was rooting for um, the character in this book a lot. But it's very provocative. I think it brings up a lot of issues to discuss, not the least of which is male rape and male trauma that is 
very much unspoken about strictly because most men don't want to speak about it and for uh, a variety of reasons, but a, a really, really, really powerful book. All right. Next is uh, Speech Team by Tim Murphy. Tim Murphy is one of my go-to writers. He wrote uh, Krista Dora. Also a few years ago, he had another just amazing book out called Correspondence. So this is his latest and probably his most commercial venture. This is set in the 80s for a large part of it. It's a lot of flashbacks and I'm getting total Breakfast Club vibes from this cover. But it's about a group of kids on a speech team and in present day, which for this, I think it starts in 2013, one of the members who is actually the narrator of the story uh, finds out on Facebook that one of their group has committed suicide. And in the letter that he leaves behind, puts part of the blame on his suicide on their coach from high school. So the four friends reconvene and quickly discover that they all found out that the coach said things or did things to them that were truly awful and in especially upon kids in their formative years. And they all make the decision because they find out that the guy is alive and living in Florida, that they're going to go down and confront him and what happens. It's really good. It's a really compulsive read. Uh, I should say compulsive. I should say propulsive. <laughs> it's a propulsive read, meaning you really won't be able to put it down once you get going because you're going to want to find out what happens. Um, it, it's also one of these books that I think so many people will identify with if you have ever felt like an outcast or an other. Certainly if you've been in forensic speech teams, any of those things that not were not the norm of like the sports, you were kind of the outsider. This is absolutely the book for you. So this comes out uh, next week. Um, okay, I've had this on my vlogs a million times, Yellow Face. I finally got around to this uh, by Rebecca Kwong. I listened to this on audio. I love this edition though. This was the Illumicrate edition. Um, I thought this was great. Um, the, I'm not even going to go into it again because I'm sure everyone's heard about this book, you know, okay, about the a white girl who steals her friend's manuscript after her friend suddenly dies, who is Asian American and publishes it her own, of, as her own and what happens as a result. Um, it's kind of a blistering send up and satire of the publishing business. I really, really liked it. I think this woman is so damn smart. I don't know if I thought she totally stuck the ending, although as I've thought about it and discussed it more, what I thought about the ending could have been exactly what she was getting at. And so my hopes and my desires about what I thought and what I believed would happen and should have happened are caught up probably in my own ideas about what I wanted to happen, if that makes sense. And if those of you who have read it <laughs> want to drop me a line and tell me what you thought, um, I don't really want to give up anything on here. But anyway, uh, but I did really enjoy this. And it's it's a really fun, uh, definitely thought-provoking read. All right, The Deep Sky by Yumi Katasi. This is, she is a first time novelist. This is a sci-fi novel, but not heavily sci-fi. It's sci-fi only in the, really in the tech element of it. It's set in the future where Earth, uh, due to global warming, is becoming um, uninhabitable. China and the United States have an escalating war that's going on. And a group of 86, I believe, uh, people are chosen to get on a spaceship and go into space and look for a new planet to colonize. So the book is told in the present and in the past. In the past, it follows this one girl who becomes part of this mission. It goes through the training school and trying to get through that and all of these uh, um, applicants, as it were, trying to get you know, onto this mission and getting weeded out and losing and 
Um, and then the present day, so it's the people that are on this ship. And when the book opens, uh, there's an explosion on board. And it's up to this girl to figure out kind of what happened. Three people are killed, including their captain. And everything points to someone on the sh ship sabotaged it. We don't know why and we don't know who. And so that drives the story. Uh, it's really good. I, I was really with it, I would say, for most of it. I thought it started to drag towards the end. I wasn't completely surprised when we got to the end, but it didn't diminish the kind of enjoyment of the book. I think it's a great summer read. I also think it's a really confident and uh, interesting first book. I'm excited to see what Yumi Katasi comes out with next. So uh, if you're a sci-fi fan, this, this could be something to add to your summer list while well, summer is still here. The last thing that I read, which I just finished, was Whisper by Brian Dearborn. This is coming out next Tuesday, the uh, 18th. This is a straight up um, thriller scream. I know what you did last summer. All of the kind of slasher films. That's this. Um, it's fun. I, I, I enjoyed a lot of it. Um, a little predictable. Uh, I... But if you are a fan of the Scream movies and all those kind of films, which he has said he wrote this as kind of an homage to those, then I think you'll totally enjoy it. Uh, now, let's talk about some things that I want to get to, I hope to get to, be still before the end of the month. One is Small World by Caleb Nelson, which comes out here in the U.S. next week. I know it's been out this my copy came from the uk because i just wanted it early and then ended up never reading it as we do those things um open water was one of my favorite books that year that it came out i thought he was just a, a, an amazing writer and so i'm so happy to be seen from so many people who have already read this and early reviews from critics that it is as good if not better than his original. So I'm really looking forward to this one. Um, it's it just is an expansive new novel about fathers and sons, faith and friendship uh, from Caleb Nelson, the number one bestselling award-winning author of Open Water. So really excited about that. Um, I, I've, I brought this one up before and I just haven't got to it. That's Sylvanians by Andrew Still. This is a nonfiction book about a, um, a, a Sullivan Institute, which was in Manhattan, that was supposed to kind of be this place for artists and intellectuals and ended up turning into a cult in the middle of New York City. Every box has been checked for me on this thing. So I, I, I'm just trying to really prioritize this because I absolutely want to read it this month. And thank you to FSG for this uh, gifted copy. But I'm really, really, really excited. And I've had a few people reach out to me when I posted this on Instagram to say they've read it or in the process of reading it. And it's immediately hooks you. It's so compelling. So all of those things, I can't, can't wait, can't wait. Okay, next is uh, Leg, the story of a limb and the boy who grew from it by Greg Marshall. I, I have to um, point out I'm, I'm loving, loving, loving this cover so, so, so much. I think it's great. And I'm going to read you the blurb, but I need to put on my glasses because guess what? I'm getting blind. Um, Greg Marshall's early years are pretty bizarre. Rewind the VHS tapes. This is the 90s. And you'll see a lopsided teenager limping across a high school stage or in a wheelchair after leg surgeries, pondering why he's crushing on a half of the Utah Jazz. Add to this home video footage a mom clacking away at her newspaper column between chemos, a dad with ALS, and a cast of foul-mouthed siblings. Fast forward the tape and you'll find Marshall happily settled into his life as a gay man, only to discover he's been living in another closet his whole life. He has cerebral palsy, a diagnosis that has been kept from him since birth. His parents always told him he just had tight tendons and left it at that. Here in the hot mess of it all lies Greg Marshall's wellspring of wit and wisdom. Uh, <laughs> by the way, it's supposed to be hilarious. So, I mean, it's horrific, that <laughs> particular thing that his parents didn't tell him, but supposed to be funny. So I'll let you know. Really, really excited to read this. 
Um, the final thing, and I, again, hope to get to it. It's a little bit of a chunker. In Ascension by Mark uh, Martin McGinnis. This is one of the books that I'm seeing that's being rumored for the Booker Prize for the long list, uh, despite the fact that it has a kind of uh, sci-fi element to it. Um, I'm going to read you this as well. Lee grew up in Rotterdam down to the waterfront as an escape from her unhappy home life and volatile father. Enchanted by the undersea world of her childhood, she excels in marine biology, traveling the globe to study ancient organisms when a trench is discovered in the Atlantic Ocean. Lee joins the exploration team, hoping to find evidence of the Earth's first life forms. What she instead finds calls into question everything we know about our own beginning. Her discovery leads Lee to the Mojave Desert in an ambitious new space agency. Drawn deeper into the agency's work, she learns that the Atlanta Trench is only one of several related phenomena from across the world, each piece linking up to suggest a pattern beyond human understanding. Lee knows that to continue working with the agency will mean leaving behind her declining mother and her younger sister and faces an impossible choice to remain with her family or to embark on a journey across the breadth of the cosmos. Um, anyway, I think it sounds just luscious. <laughs> How's that? Luscious. So... Um, I'm just really, really, really excited about this one. And I hope to get to do this one as well. If I don't, then some of these might carry over. You know how we do the drill, whatever. We all do the same things. I hope to get to it. And who knows what else is going to pop up in this week and someone's raving about something. And anyway, but all right. So uh, there you go. That's kind of my hodgepodge mess of read, reviewed, and hope to get to books in these last couple of weeks of July. Um, for those of you who have already checked out the Gazerim podcast, thank you so much. And for those who haven't, I would ask you or encourage, not ask you, I would encourage you and say, please check it out if you can at gazereading.com or at your podcast platform of choice. Almost too many words in my mouth, either Spotify or Apple or wherever you get your podcasts from. So that's it. I will see you guys soon. I hope you're all having a wonderful uh, day, week, month, wherever you are. If you're on vacation, I hope you're having an incredible vacation and uh, I hope to see you all soon. Thanks.